Good morning. It is, uh, it is a delight to be with you this morning. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us uh, here at the SEMC. For those of you who are here in person and uh, those who are joining online, uh, just thankful for the chance that God gives us each and every week to grow in our understanding and our desire uh, of uh, His great love for us and how we then respond uh, to Him. And so uh, thanks for creating some, some time uh, to spend with us uh, in, in that. I just want to share with you a couple of things. Now, last week, I just want to say uh, thank you to all those who served uh, at our soup luncheon last Sunday. It, I know a number of you uh, were able to enjoy that. Did you, did you enjoy that? Yeah, and so for, there are many people who take time to, uh, to come and prepare that, not only the people who make soup, but that a lot of people serve in that. So let's just show our appreciation to them as well, because um, that's an exciting thing for us. In fact, we love we we loved it so much. We're going to have chili at the end of this month, and uh, so um, we are uh, just we are actually having the chili catered by Sarnia Blessings, and uh, and so that's a way that we can support their work and their ministry here in town. But we are looking for a few people to help us out on that's on February 25th, following our annual meeting. And, uh, and so we'd love to have you involved, uh, or if you're willing to serve, we just, we need a, just a fewer number of people for that, but it would be great if, if uh, there are some who are willing, then you can contact the office and we'll, uh, we'll orchestrate that. And just thanks to uh, the lovely Amanda Prasad for uh, heading those things up and coordinating everybody uh, in, in that. Um, and then um, I was going to say something else, wasn't I, Jonah? Oh, yeah. Today we're excited about, uh, we get to have our uh, nursery um, back and staffed. And the reason we can do that is because there are those willing to serve. So uh, I think that's, that's an exciting thing. And so the, nur- the way the nursery is going to work, just for every- everybody to know, so we start, everybody starts in and then the nursery will be staffed once the kids are released to Kid Jam as well. So that way we're all in here together for a while, and then the nursery will open down there. So thankful for the number of people who have uh, said, yes, I'm willing to serve in that. What a blessing that will be, not only to the families uh, who have children in that age group now, but to others as they, as they come along as well. And so we're thankful for, for that opportunity. And um, keep me going. Hey, you know, um, you know we, we gather here on a Sunday... And uh, there, and we are a representative of some things. We are also uh, we pray into some things, and we don't. Many of us don't get the opportunity to see some of that. So this picture is uh, taken from Friday night at our at our youth uh, night at impact. Our grade sixes to grade twelve meet every week, and um, there is a group of about. Uh, 35 students or so that meet there every Friday, uh, every Friday evening, and it's amazing to get to know them and to hear the questions that they have, and to encourage them and uh, help them develop their faith in Jesus. And so, can I just uh, can I just encourage you to be mindful in prayer for? what is happening there, and so thankful for the leaders uh, who are, are part of that, and uh, just to know that, that these, are, these students are uh, awesome. They are really good. They are, it's life-giving to me uh, to be able to have the opportunity to learn with them and from them, and, uh, and I know the, and it's really, it's just a, it's a fun couple of hours every, every Friday night, but we are, we're learning uh, some really good things, so that's a really cool thing as well. And then the next picture uh, I wanted to show you is, uh, so this, we, some of you may know, we have a, a trip going to El Salvador that was scheduled in January, but has been moved to April. So this is not in relationship to this trip. But if you've been thinking, hey, I would really love to, to be able to uh, go on a uh, mission trip with uh, our church family, then the next trip will be happening on November 23rd to December 1st. However, the preparation needs to start now. And so there's an information meeting on Sunday, February 18th at 3.30. At 3.30 or 3? Whatever that says, 3.30. 
uh, uh, Sunday, February 18th at 3.30. And so uh, that's, that helps you get understand what's involved with that and what kind of commitments look like and costs involved and the opportunity that you get to learn about what God is doing in another part of the world, experience that, and have that inform the way you live. That's one of the reasons why we keep going, uh, is because God continues to show us how he is at work in ways that we can't uh, normally see. And then the last thing I want to show you is, uh, and I'm going to invite Ellen Daly to come here. Uh, so uh, the other thing that you don't often see is what happens on, sun on Saturdays for, the, for over these next two and a half months. On Saturdays over these next two and a half months is, is, uh, is Upward Basketball. You can come on up, El Ellen. And uh, at halftime uh, of each of our games, they, they have a speaker. And the speaker gives a short testimony or a little devotion uh, to encourage people and to just to present Jesus uh, to the, the parents who are there. Do you know that we have you know, about 300 people that come through those south doors on Saturdays? That's where our best energy goes. And that's the greatest opportunity that God gives us in a language we speak among people we know uh, in this community, many of whom do not have a relationship with Jesus. It's an amazing thing. And so thank you for those who are praying on the hour for each of those game days. Here's something that they're sharing. And so Ellen shared a little story. And I, I, I asked her if she would share it today. And she said, well, can I have the whole sermon time? <laughs> All right, why don't, you, why don't you do that? Let's see if we can get this right. Surprisingly, Ellen's not a loud speaker. Some of you might. So we're going to try to help her out here. All right? All right. Um, don't be scared. There we go. All Hello. right. Hello. Is it on? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. I was had the privilege of sharing yesterday at the Upper Basketball, and... Um, it was about um, my f sister's first husband had terminal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry yet. Okay. Um, you did it six times without crying yesterday. I know. Anyways, um, my first, my sister's first husband um, died of terminal cancer. But while he was sick, I was, I went there helped my sister out with her two young kids. And I could feel the sadness in her. And I just, I prayed, Lord, give me the words to comfort her. And so, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm crying now. It happens every time you step oh, in that spot. Goodness actually. <laughs> So, I didn't know I had to need a tissue. <laughs> Anyways, he, he, he showed me this verse, a uh, couple verses in Psalms 41. Thanks. 41, verse 10 and verse 13. Now, for demonstration purposes, I think I might get you guys to try and put your right hand... Does your right hand hold the right hand of the person beside you? Anybody want to answer that? Huh? Can you? No. Right hand to right hand. Right hand Not to right, right hand. hand to left hand. Right okay, hand so, to right hand. So right hand. So my right hand will be touching the guy or lady beside me's left hand, right? Left to right. Right to right is like this. So it's a face-on-face -face meeting. And so anyways, it says this. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then verse 13 says, I am the Lord your God, who upholds your right hand who says to you, do not fear, I will help you. 
I want to share this lyrics to this song. Every hour, Lord, you know me, and you always will. Oh, you keep me? Yeah, you hold me close. Like new mercies in the morning, still you surround me, and all I know is every hour of every day, oh, I need you, Lord, and that will never change. Every moment and every way, oh, I need you, Lord, and that will never change. No, that will never change. You're a fortress. You're my hiding place. You're the shelter where I am safe. I have, you have freed me, yeah, you call me by name. My redeemer, my saving grace. Every hour of every day, oh, I need you, Lord, and that will never change. Every moment, in every way, oh, I need you, Lord, and that will never change. Faithful, that's who you are, more than able to care for my heart. Father and friend, there to the end, you are faithful, O oh God. Every hour of every day, oh, I need you, Lord, and that will never change. And every moment and every way, oh, I need you, Lord, and that will never change. Because faithful, that's who you are. You are more than able to care for my heart. Father and friend, there to the end, you are faithful, O oh God. Yes, you are faithful. So I just want to encourage each of you that whatever you're facing, whether it's a health issue or financial issue or whatever it might be, I just encourage you with these words from God that he is right here. And he, is with his righteous right hand, is holding your right hand. And he's saying, do not fear. I'm here to help. Call upon me. Trust me. Let me be the place that you can shelter. Anyways, thanks for listening. I'll hand it back over to Pastor Dave. That's a great way to start. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, let's, um, I'm going to invite the music team to come up, and as they do, let's just uh, take a moment to pray. So, Father, as we are here, we're reminded that you are with us, that you turn to us face to face, and you extend welcome to us. Thank you for that. As we gather, we recognize that we, and diff- many of us, uh, have these difficulties, these struggles, these questions. We're wondering. And it would just sometimes be good to be reminded that you are here. You are with us. And so in this time, in these moments that we have to share together, God, would you use that as we confess our need for you and maybe our questions. May your presence overwhelm us with that. So we commit ourselves to you. Teach us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I was going to say something, but I'm just at a loss for words now. (laughs) Sometimes beautiful moments can just stay beautiful. I invite you to stand as we uh, join in song together. When uh, I was talking to Pastor Dave about... uh, joining together in worship this morning he said um, the theme is on Holy Spirit and uh, right away this song popped into my head I absolutely love this song but uh, I joked with Dave this morning that uh, (laughs) I have a theological issue with this song (laughs) so sorry to do this but this song talks about the Holy Spirit and us inviting the Holy Spirit 
to meet us in this place, but my understanding of God is that he is already here. And I just want to acknowledge that as we join in, in song together this morning and singing this beautiful song, and as we invite the Holy Spirit to come here through the words of this song, I just want to recognize that the Holy Spirit is already here. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in this place, and as God's people, we are, we are here to meet with the Holy Spirit. But it is a beautiful song.
you that we stand here for. Holy Spirit, we give thanks that it's you that meets us here. God, wherever we are in our mornings, in our days, in our lives, whatever troubles that we're faced with, we meet you here this morning and we just lay those at the foot of your cross. Lord, take those burdens off our shoulders, even just for the 60 minutes that we get to be here this morning. Take those burdens off of our minds, and Lord, open our hearts. Open our hearts to worship you, to hear your words spoken to us, and God, we'll meet you back at the cross later in this worship service to celebrate your greatest gift to mankind, your sacrifice on the cross. So I'll stand with arms high, not abandoned in all of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrender.
for everything you do, for everything that you've done, and for the plans you have for us. We live for you. Amen. And you may be seated this morning. Shane for leading our team with Amanda and Jarrett and Tara and Brittany and Heather this morning, uh, just for just setting our hearts right to uh, to receive God's word. And we want to uh, allow our kids that opportunity to do that. And uh, so our teacher today is uh, Mr. Schofield, and he's ready for you, All right? And so just thankful, you know, one of the cool things is, as we talked about the nursery also being going to be open now and and uh, is just this, this desire to serve and the ability to be equipped. And so thankful that uh, Michaela and Josh get to be in the service with us for a change. Uh, and so we are, um, just before we dismiss our kids to Kid Jam, we are also going to say happy birthday to Mr. Riley. Now, Mr. Riley, it's his birthday. And I'm not going to tell you how old he is. But. I will say that uh, today's also a special day. I, I appreciate Mr. Riley. I'm not going to tell you how old he is, but I appreciate Mr. Riley. Just thank you for the way in which you have been serving others. Thank you for allowing me to get to know your family over a long number of years and for being part of that. And your, your kids and now your grandkids, those are your family's uh, is a gift. And, uh, and now in your retirement years, you are just making a significant difference for us in the life of our church family. Thank you for the way you are serving and making us better because of it. Happy birthday to you. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you how old Mr. Riley is, but I will tell you that today is also uh, 23 years since I first started here uh, uh, on staff, February 4th, 2001. That's hard to believe. <laughs> That's hard to believe. And so... Uh, so 23 years ago, I'm not going to tell you how old Mr. Riley is now, but 23 years ago, Mr. Riley was 42. <laughs> so those of you who can do math still without a calculator, you figure it out. And uh, anyway, kids uh, age two to grade six, you can make your way out uh, to, the serv uh, to uh, your Kid Jam class. If you have your, um, if you have a Bible open or a Bible app, if would you uh, would you open it up to um, uh, Ephesians chapter five, and that we're continuing this series uh, um, called "Strengthening Our Faith." And this morning we're talking about living living by the Holy Spirit. And so, Father, as we have uh, sung and uh, already heard testimony of the way in which you intersect with our lives and you compel us uh, through your word, through your presence, through the world around us, God, thank you for that. So in these moments, would you teach us what it means to be united to you in Jesus Christ and to understand this gift that you've given the Holy Spirit. Teach us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, in uh, early in the morning of July 27th, 1996, it's a long time ago, I was aboard a private jet that touched down in Atlanta, Georgia. I was with a small group of people, co-workers, one of them had won this trip and uh, with, through Air Canada and invited me to be part of this group. 
It promised to be a once-in-a-lifetime adventure to take in some of the world's greatest athletes at the Summer Olympic Games. And what an adventure it was. Now, if you can try to remember back to 1996, information did not travel very quickly back then, just as it does today. We didn't know until we landed that and made our way to the location where the games were, if some of you might remember this, that there, a bomb had exploded and there had been fatalities in Atlanta on the Olympic grounds that day. There were armed police everywhere. The crowds were sparse, and the thought of even pausing competition was being discussed. But the games went on in recognition of the training and the commitment of these athletes that had come from all around the world. And a few of you might remember that on that same night of July 27, 1996, there was a, a, an historic occasion for Canadian sport. Donovan Bailey raced to Olympic gold in the premier event of the Olympics, the 100-meter sprint. And he did it in a world record time at the time, 9.84 seconds. Our group was not in the stadium on that, at that time. But our flight was, because our flight was scheduled to leave. However, the Atlanta airport staff allowed our small group of Canadians into a side room so that we could watch the broadcast of the race in what would now be considered a, a small television. And from, but from that small room with our small gathering of people, there was this great eruption of jubilant celebration as Canada won gold in the 100 meter. And you know, as someone who follows sport closely and having a good friend who competed on Canada's sprint team for a number of years, this was about as exciting as it gets. A world record, a gold medal, beating the Americans in the United States. It doesn't get much better than that. And for many, Don Donovan Bailey had seemingly come out of nowhere over the previous few years, and he had risen now to the pinnacle of his sport. But make no mistake, make no mistake, he possessed incredible natural ability. However, that ability alone wasn't enough to get him to the top of his sport. So how did that happen? He needed training. He needed instruction and discipline that came from outside, from an outside voice, from his coach, Dan Path, who he would learn to trust. You know, I think some of Donovan Bailey's story is valuable to us. No matter where we are, we have God-given natural ability and talent. All of us do. However, too many of us try to get by on that natural ability, but it can only get us so far. We need a trusted coach to provide instruction. We need to apply ourselves to training and learn to yield ourselves to discipline. The good news, the good news as we continue this series, Strengthening Our Faith, is that God doesn't leave us alone, as Ellen reminded us, to figure things out. God is willing to give us the Holy Spirit. The SEMC Statement of Faith reads like this, the Holy Spirit is a divine person sent to indwell, guide, teach, and empower the believer and to convince the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. I love the words that are used here, indwell, guide, teach, and empower. This is what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. He takes us as we are, he takes us as we are and transforms us by his presence and his promise and by his power to live faithfully and victoriously for the glory of God. Listen to how Paul describes this. If you have your Bibles open there to Ephesians chapter 5, listen to how Paul describes this. And I'm going to start actually right at the beginning of the chapter. He says, follow God's example as Therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not even be a, a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed, because there are these are improper for God's holy people. No, should there be, nor should there be any obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, 
but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, nor immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of light, of the light, consists in all the goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, from rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. You know, if you were to continue reading on from here, Paul would go on to describe how a life filled with the Holy Spirit's influences our relationships, our family, our work, and our interpersonal relationships. Therefore, it's worth taking note of some of the key phrases that lead, that inform, and culminate with this final instruction of being filled with the Spirit. And you might find it beneficial as you go through to, to circle or highlight or underline some of these things. Right, he starts off by saying, follow God's example. He says, walk in the way of love. Live as children of light. And then he culminates that with, then, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. There is a need for us to apply ourselves as we develop as genuine followers of Jesus Christ. There's an active ingredient that is necessary for us. You know, it's true we can do good things in short measure. Anybody can look good for a moment. We can conduct ourselves or portray ourselves to be spiritual or Christian in certain contexts. But without regular attention to the work of the Holy Spirit of God, we lack the ability and the determination to live to the fullness of of the purpose for which we've been created. In 1992, Donovan Bailey was left off the Team Canada sprint team for the Barcelona Olympics. He had some of the fastest times posted in the nation that year before when he was healthy. The problem was he couldn't stay healthy and his anger and his pride, he did not receive that news well. In the year or so so previous, he had turned down the invitation of of this coach, Dan. But after this incident, Dan approached him again, and he he said this to him. He said, you're talented. You could be the greatest. You've got to get serious, though. You need to hone your skills and train and do things properly because this is clearly not working out for you. You compete and you get faster every year, but as soon as you gain more speed... You get injured because you have no base. You have no training, and you don't understand what you're doing. You get out, you go out, you put on your shoes, and you run. That's it. He said, when you want to get serious, give me a call. Now, some of you are here. You're here today. You're listening today. You're watching today or whenever that today is for you. And either you or someone you know is disenchanted with their life. Maybe they're angry. Maybe they're frustrated by the circumstances of life. You lack desire to honor God with your life. Maybe it's because you've decided that you can just pick and choose when you want to look good, when you want to act godly. But what happens when things don't go your way? What happens when the circumstances don't fall into place the way you think they ought to fall into place? 
Well, if you're, if you're like me, if you're like me, you'll probably look around and try to blame someone or look for some other circumstance to excuse your behavior. Maybe you think you just have to keep working harder at the things that you already think you know, the way you've always done them, because that's what you know, and why would you do things any other way? But if you keep, just because you, if you work harder at things that aren't going to produce any kind of different result, then why keep working harder at them? Maybe it's time, then, to listen to a different coach. We want different results with our life. Maybe we need a different coach. Let me introduce you to the Holy Spirit. And I want to take some time uh, in this over these, over these next few minutes to have you actually look at some passages. Why can you trust the Holy Spirit? I want you to know that you can trust the Holy Spirit, number one, because He is God. And while I won't flip to every single passage, if you want to turn with me, I do want to read uh, a number of them to you. Because my thought is that most of us will not take the time to examine this deeper on our own. Why can you trust the Holy Spirit? Because he is God. In John chapter 14, Jesus says these words. He says, very truly, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these. Because I'm going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I'll do it. And if you love me and keep my commands, I will ask the Father, and he will give you a, another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. So that's reading through to verse 17 there. I want you, if you flip right to the very first page of the book, you realize that the Spirit of God was involved in the creation of the world. We read where the Spirit of God is hovering over the waters, and then as God then goes through creation, and he comes to creating uh, man and woman, he says, let us create them in our image. The Spirit of God is present with God the Father and Jesus the Son at, at creation. In 2 Peter chapter 1, why can... I can trust the Spirit because the Spirit inspires the Word of God. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 21, it says, For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets through humans spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. These words here that we have in, these, in our Bible or our, our Bible apps, they didn't, they're not just coincidental. But God spoke them through the Spirit who moved the authors to write them. You know, I think, and probably one of the most significant things for me is understanding that God communicates to us through the Holy Spirit. Last week we learned that Jesus is present with God right now and he's a mediator for us in between us and God. How do we understand God's thoughts? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 reminds us that, that the Holy Spirit communicates God's thoughts to us. So these are the things that God has revealed to us by the Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thought of God, the thoughts of God, except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given to us. So we have the ability to know, to communicate with the God of all the universe, and he is willing to disclose some things through the Holy Spirit to communicate to us. That should quicken us in our relationship, our conversations with God, our, our prayer life with God. And then Romans chapter 8, so how do we then, the, the, the other part about that, the other part about that is in Romans chapter 8, we read these words, it says, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for. Sometimes we think we've got to have the right words, right? One of the reasons why many people say, oh, I don't want to pray is because I don't pray, is because I don't know what to say. 
And sometimes it's just acknowledging that I am in the presence of God and the Spirit of God that takes what we can't even put into words. And he intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Will we allow ourselves enough pause in our lives to let the Spirit of God work in us to communicate us to communicate what's going on in our hearts and our minds to God and then allow Him to communicate back through the Spirit to us. So those are reasons why we can trust the Holy Spirit as our, our coach. When we come into this relationship with the Holy Spirit, a relationship with the Holy Spirit gives us a number of things, and it's going to be impossible to categorize them all for you. So I leave these with you, and, and, ask, and I'll read a couple of them briefly. But to know when Jesus speaks of the Spirit, he speaks of a Spirit who will teach us, who will guide us, who will comfort us, who will assure us, as we talked about, just who will communicate on our behalf. In 1 Corinthians 12, we read about how the, the Spirit of God uh, gives us a gift, maybe sometimes more than one gift. So we have God in our God-created form, we have our own natural abilities and strength. But when we come into this relationship with Jesus Christ and God gives us the Holy Spirit, he will give us a gift to be used for his glory. I was talking to, uh, talk, talking to somebody the, the other day, somebody, somebody asked, well, what, what, is, what is your gift? What is your and I can tell you, I can tell you most assuredly that uh, this, what, what I do every Sunday, is something only God can do through me. Because if any of you ever tried to have a conversation with me outside of here, you know I just babble. And I, uh, I'm not a very talkative person at all. But I acknowledge this is, what, this is something that God has given. And so I want to steward that well. And some days I do that better than others. But uh, this talking in front of people is my most fearful thing in all the world. I promise you that. The other thing that, that uh, God, but we function together in that. And so in Ephesians chapter 4, in, the, in our main path, but just, the, just previous to that, in Ephesians chapter 4, we read these words, and starting in verse 29, he says, Do not... Let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Which is a really interesting phrase, right? We build each other up, not according to what we want to say or what we think they need to hear, but according to their needs. That's actually a huge distinction. That it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, as, just as in Christ, God forgave you. We can grieve the Holy Spirit by our reluctance, our resistance to allowing Him to work in our lives by our sin. And so we stop the work of the Spirit of God in our lives. And in particular, when we read about what is possible as we allow the Spirit of God, that forgiveness and reconciliation and unity is so important uh, to, the, to the Spirit. In fact, you read to the beginning of Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about the unity of God that he seeks. A division causes grief to the Spirit of God. And so then we deny the capacity of the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. But the positive side of that is there, the Spirit enables us towards reconciliation. And so maybe, maybe there's something that you, you think, well, how? Maybe you've never thought about it this way. How do I sign up for the coach, Holy Spirit? How do I sign up for that? How do I live with the Holy Spirit in my life? Number one, have you received the Holy Spirit? When we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and Jesus in John chapter 3 says, 
it's, it's important to be born of the water and the spirit, to be born physically and then to be born spiritually. Have we acknowledged our desire to follow Jesus Christ with our lives, acknowledging him as Lord and Savior? He said, when, he do, when you do that, when you do that, the Spirit of God places a seal, a, like an, a, a tag of identity on you that says you belong to God. And he gives you that Holy Spirit to allow you then to do all those things that we just talked about, to communicate with God, to be counseled by God, to be comforted by God. That's all that happens when we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Savior. Maybe sometimes we, we've forgotten that. How do, we, how do we grow? How do we live beyond that? Well, we have to share what God teaches us, just like Ellen did this morning. It's just really powerful uh, to listen to her yesterday and, and uh, just thankful for that opportunity. If you know Jesus as your Savior, if you, have, if you walk with Jesus Christ as your Lord, if you have the Holy Spirit living in, living in you, then you have a story to tell. And maybe it's a very simple story of how God showed up to help you to enter into something, a very difficult circumstance, but had a profound effect on her. And, and certainly, many of us can recognize that. In, in John chapter 15, we read these words, when the advocate, speaking of the Holy Spirit, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, says Jesus speaking, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you then must also testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. So those things which the Spirit of God teaches us, we are given instruction by Jesus to testify, to share with others. And one of the reasons why we do not feel, we maybe fail to progress as much in our desire to honor God with our lives is we keep those things bottled up inside. And we don't find ways to share them. They don't have to be grand or spectacular ways. They don't have to be long oratories. How has God showed up in your life? How has he helped you, sustained you, corrected you, challenged you, helped you to recognize that he was there? Let me encourage you to share that with others. Even one other. It's an amazing thing when you actually speak and point and give glory to God, what God will do in your life. I can't even begin to be able to explain all of that. Just know that it is true. And it, it must be so because as we go to the end of the book, in the book of Revelation, we are reminded it's, it's through the blood of Jesus Christ, through his sacrifice and our testimony to, his, the, to the life that he has given to us by which we overcome. We don't want to be middlers, muddling along, and in in, uh, dragging ourselves, trudging our way through the course of life. We want to be overcomers, don't we? We want to live with a little gumption about us, a little energy, excitement, anticipation of what God is doing and what he is yet to do. And one of the ways that we have been given to do that is to share what he's been doing in our lives. And so we ought to do that. And then as we read this, we then as we go on through life, we get to be filled with the Spirit again and again. That doesn't mean we come into a new birth relationship over and over again. That's not what that means. It means that when the Spirit of God comes into our life, we still have our natural will and we fight, against, we fight against that. And the Spirit of God is working at transforming our lives and allowing us, our, our will, to understand His will. And that's where you have this, this, this transfer that happens, this teaching that happens, this, this tension that happens. We read it here in Ephesians. We read it in Galatians. Between those things that are, that are the characteristics that are predominant in our own natural will, our own pride, our ego, our anger, our bitterness, our jealousy, all those things, those should not be, but the fruit of the Spirit, the result of the character of Christ should be those things which are developing in our lives. And in fact, that's exactly where we need to go to. What is the evidence of the Holy Spirit in our lives? 
And maybe before I get there, I'll just remind you of this. You think, don't forget, don't forget. The Spirit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of our in our life, He leads our lives. He leads our lives. The Holy Spirit is a is a He, not an it. He leads our life. But sometimes He leads our life through difficult roads. Just as He led, just as He led Jesus into the wilderness. It was the Spirit who led Jesus into the wilderness. And we need to remember that. What is the evidence? Let me go th- I'll go through these really quickly. And I want, you to, I want you to notice one thing. These are active things. These are not static things. These are th- aren't things to check off. These are things that we're constantly, constantly working through. I'm reflecting the character of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit. As I yield my life to the work of the Spirit, then these things ought to become evidential. They ought to be noticed by others, not possessed by us, but noticed by others. I am striving to follow God's truth. One of the evidences of of the Spirit's work in our life is our desire to understand what does God's wisdom say, and God's wisdom is primarily disclosed to us through the Word of God. And so we will have a, a hunger for God's truth. We have a desire to share God's truth, as I've just mentioned. One of, the, one of those things, God commissions us to go into all the world, being led by the Spirit of Jesus into all the world. It's one of the reasons why we continually talk about serving others and serving our community. It's not something that we made up. This was God's plan right from the beginning. We're just trying to follow that because it's for our benefit to extend ourselves in the power that the Spirit gives us, with the gifting that He gives us, to serve others according to, for, for His glory and, and according to His name. As you go through this passage, you'll notice that one of the evidences of is gratitude. Right, The idea of overflowing with thankfulness is an evidence of, of the Spirit at work in our lives, that we have an appreciation that God is in control. We can acknowledge that. And then sometimes this little verse, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, gets cut off. And it's probably cut off in some of your Bibles if you if you have, whether you're using an app or you have a a paper Bible. There's probably a subheading between 20 and 21 as it goes through. Well, 21 often gets cut off from 22 and following. And it's so important. It is so, so important. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submit to one another. I get to yield myself to my brothers and sisters in Christ. And that's one of the greatest joys of the, that I have been learning over the course of my, my walk with Jesus. You have the Spirit of Christ in you. And when I lean in to learn what the Spirit of Christ is doing in your life, and I learn from that, and I come alongside you, and I get to hang out with you a little bit, that's exciting. And that encourages me and strengthens me. Because you know what? I don't have any answers, hardly any at all. I hardly have any solutions at all. But when I learn to submit myself to the way in which the Spirit of God is working through the unique gifting that you have, together we can accomplish so much more. It's an incredible thing. And that transfers to all our relationships. It's unfortunate that that those subtitles which came in later divide that up. Because this is all one thought. It's a great thing. Now, I want to be really, really careful here in these moments uh, that are left. I want to remind you that just because that you trust God with your life, just because you've acknowledged Jesus Christ with you as your Savior, just because you have the gift of the Holy Spirit in you, it does not mean that you are going to win gold in the race of life. But listen to this part. Run to win anyway. Run to win anyway. 
you know, Donovan Bailey's career after the Olympics would have some downs and then some ups, and he would never return, as few athletes do, to that incredible historic moment of, uh, in Atlanta. It's interesting that in his own words, he describes the elation and appreciation of being on the receiving end of those uh, of ovations on that hot July summer night in 1996. However, it, he also describes a very similar experience on his last race. He had, you see, he had suffered an Achilles tendon injury right there at, as he was attempting, and he was now attempting to make a comeback. In fact, he would post another sub 10 second time along the way, which by the way, for those of you who aren't sports fans, that's really, really fast. But pneumonia would knock him out of the Sydney games. And in what would be his last race at the Canadian Olympic Championships held in Edmonton in 2001, Donovan Bailey would not even qualify. And he writes these words in his autobiography, Undisputed. He said, I, I did not feel emptiness, not for one second. For the better part of a decade, I had worked through pain and some brutal lessons to give the crowds joy. And now they were returning the favor. They stood, many sobbed and cheered and waved flags from all over the world. The overwhelming gratitude I felt, that standing ovation brought tears to my eyes. And for those of you who are interested in intriguing sidebars, one of the impossible messages to miss as we walked through the Olympic Village in 1996 was from an aggressive and really arrogant American campaign from Nike. They weren't an official sponsor, but they took up advertising space on every billboard and building, it seemed, in all of Atlanta. And I have a picture somewhere, and I couldn't find it, but I have a picture somewhere, maybe it's just in my mind, because there's a lot of empty space in there rolling around. But I have a picture of, of this billboard that says, you don't win silver, you lose gold. So devastating. And in the aftermath of the Olympics, and the Americans losing not only this race, but also the relay a week later to the Canadians, Nike came under fire from athletes, athletic associations all over the world for undermining the very efforts of the people from whom they made money. You see, not every athlete in a competition is going to win gold. Not every athlete is going to cross the finish line even, but that shouldn't be a poor, that, that shouldn't be a poor reflection of who they are. One of the key things that I continue to learn over the years is enjoy the victories that God gives us along the way. We have good days, right? Amen? You have good days. And then learn to share those stories. Don't lose track of the good things because that's one of the ways that the Spirit of God strengthens us. And another key thing is to not get too, too down on the hard times or the suffering or the difficulty along the way. We may not necessarily understand why it's going on or what's going on. But if God is our coach, if the Holy Spirit is our coach, then we can trust his perspective to help us through those challenging times. And then we can continue to demonstrate and reflect the character of Christ, the character of the Spirit of God in those times as we're being shaped by the Spirit within us. We can stick to the training that we receive through his word and work to align our ambitions to God's greater objectives. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 says this in verse 24. I love this. It says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Run in such a way as to get the prize. We may not always win every race that, comes, that we face in the battle of life. But we can approach every single day, every single occasion, every single relationship, every single opportunity, every single challenge in such a way 
that we are ready to win. Are you ready to win? Some of you are trying to limp through life on your own strength. Some of you are looking back at a past victory and thinking, oh, I just got to recapture that. How do I get back to that? How do I relive that previous moment in time? And some of you are disheartened right now today by a circumstance or maybe a series of circumstances, and it seems relentless to you. Some of you maybe have even given up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Run anyway. You're here. Did you wake up and you have breath this morning? Hello? Maybe the answer is no. Did you wake up and you have breath this morning? Run anyway. Sometimes you've got to adjust the pace to finish the race. Run anyway. Run anyway. Because that's what God wants you to do. That's what the Spirit God of God wants you to do. Don't give up. Let's pray together. Father, here, here we are. Here our hearts in our prayer. Hear our confusion. Hear our confession. Our failure, our frustration, our anger, our bitterness, our apathy. God, help us to run anyway. In such a way that we reflect the goodness of Christ that is brought about by the Spirit of God within us. And I pray today, God, especially, especially for those who are trying to get by on their own good merits, their own natural ability. May today be a day of salvation, a day where they experience a life born of the Spirit, inviting you to be their life coach. Would you take residence in their life? Change their heart. Change your ambition. Reveal your spirit through their lives. And I pray, God, for those of us, and this happens to all of us, where we neglect to nurture our relationship with you, where we ignore the voice of our coach, the Holy Spirit. Fill us anew. Give us a strong base to do the simple things over and over and over again because you are faithful and you want to see us through. There is a prize that you have in store for us that will not perish. May we run anyway. Thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus, your son, and thank you, Jesus, for sending your Holy Spirit. We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing, um, we're going to sing this song, um, and uh, as we get ready for uh, communion, if you're watching uh, this video, then you can get uh, some crackers and some juice, and you can join us in this, and if you haven't done so yet, Uh, There are um, containers, there's some here, there's some in the foyer if you want to make sure you have that and we'll eat and drink in a moment. And it's an opportunity for us to actually center ourselves and renew ourselves and invite the Spirit of God to fill us afresh. As we sing, maybe there's something that you need to confess. Maybe there's a desire you need to rekindle by which the the only way that's possible is through the Spirit of God at work in you. So let's sing this and then then we'll eat and we'll drink together, okay? I invite you to stand as we continue in worship.
If it's helpful for you, you can start decrinkling. There's no easy way to say that, right? So, our God is greater, our God is stronger, our God is a healer. Maybe you needed to hear that this morning. Maybe I needed to hear that this morning. We know that none of this is possible apart from the love of Jesus Christ for us. The power of God, the holiness of God, poured out, emptied for us. We are the beneficiaries. How often do we pause to actually consider that? This is one of the means that God gives us to do that. The other is through baptism. So as we have our meals together around a table, as we, and as we do these symbolically, as we assemble in, in a place like this, we center ourselves on the life of Jesus given for us. 
Apostle Paul says, For I receive from the Lord what I now pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, here we are. Desiring to have you lead us. Reminded that you turn to us, extending your right hand to meet us face to face. To speak life into us through the challenges that each day brings. So thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the author and perfecter of our faith. May we run with perseverance the race marked out for us, just as he has done. And thank you for the great cloud of witnesses, those who have gone before us, those stories that we are mindful of, that remind us that there is great joy in store. Because of Jesus. And so we pray in his name. And all God's people said, Amen. I invite you to stand one more time. They're going to continue to sing this song out, and you're welcome to join them as they do. But let me leave this with you as our, our benediction. Peace to you, brothers and sisters, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Run anyway. Amen.
स्टोन थी 